Howdy folks, another product teardown today. Uh, today I've got the FIO A3, and this is a portable battery powered headphone amplifier. And uh, I recently picked this one up because uh, I recently got a new pair of headphones, the Hi-Fi Man HE400Is, and they are planar magnetic headphones and they're therefore not very efficient. Uh, their sensitivity is pretty low and so my portable devices, particularly my phone, has difficulty driving them. So I thought I'd pick this up since it was on sale. It has pretty good reviews. And uh, yeah, it, it sort of it does the business. And uh, FIO, they, they, they're uh, an Asian manufacturer, um, and they do sort of like hi-fi audio stuff. They do like MP3 players, amps, and DACs, and that kind of stuff. So uh, this is kind of right up their, their alley. And it's, it's excellent value, I, I have to say that, that much. But I'm not really going to do a, so much of a review on this because... Of course, I don't think people watch this channel for reviews. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. It, you just have uh, like a low and high gain. So this probably this just sets some sort of like preamp um, for the line level that it's accepting. Um, you have an on-off volume control, so it's one of those volume controls with the switch built in, and it's just got a built-in bass boost circuit, which is pretty subtle. And I, I actually do like it. It's not it's not ridiculous. So it's something I actually might use depending on the headphones. And it's just got an in and an out micro USB for charging. It's got a little LED there for on off and charging it pulses when it's charging. So there's actually a little micro that's driving that, that's doing PWM on that. And uh, it's like a nice a little uh, aluminum case. Um, so it's ob obviously an extrusion. So uh, there's two screws here and I just pulled them out and I thought I'd do this all on camera. Um, but I think this is just going to slide out one end or something. I may have to take the volume knob off to get this open. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to review this. I'm just going to take it apart because, well, that's what uh, I think most people want to see. So it kind of sprang out when I took the screws off. So I'm, I'm hopefully this isn't going to uh, be too difficult to get back on. Okay, so it's just a plastic, plastic end cap, and there is a little, there's a little light pipe in there. So that's nice. And we can kind of see some stuff in there. I can see some caps in there. So I would presume that I could push this. Aha. It's actually a lot more force than you'd, you'd think to pull this out of here. So they must have something in this. This is really tight fit. Oh, that's why. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is just an aluminum extrusion. There's just a groove in there that the uh, the plastic sits in. There's nothing special about that. This is why it was so difficult to get out. There's this, like, rubber pad, and it's pressing against the cell, and that presses against the inside of this, and that's what makes it so tight, which I guess is good so that the battery doesn't move around, but I'm assuming that this is glued in or probably taped in. But, uh, okay, so... Yeah, this looks this looks quite nice. Uh, so this is so this is just some plastic that they've stuck on here so that the board doesn't short out against the metal case. And this is probably why it's sproinged out. You can see they didn't really uh, this this appears to have been put on maybe too far to this side, and that's why the case was touching this. So okay, well, that'll come that comes off. And we've got some circuitry here. Uh, looks like another sticky foam pad on the pot. So I'll put that back on. Okay, so very nice layout on this side. Uh, we've got some inductors, so obviously there's a power supply over here. And then we've got some chips, which I suspect will be headphone amplifiers or op amps of some sort. Uh, maybe a, a, a micro somewhere. And uh, on this side we've got our lithium cell, which I'll take out. We've got some, some caps. Now the caps look to be, uh, they look to be solid polymer, which is nice. Uh, the easy way to tell is they don't have any score marks on them. And uh, basically, electrolytics have, uh, they have, generally speaking, I shouldn't say this is 100%, but uh, almost all electrolytics will have a vent on the top um, so that they basically don't become a pipe bomb if something goes wrong. But of course, solid polymer caps, they don't have a liquid electrolyte. They don't have that problem, so they don't bother to score them because it makes no sense. No. So not seeing not, not seeing any vent marks on the top tells me these are probably polymer, but who knows, they could be the you know the dirt cheapest. 
uh, you know, electrolytic caps that are just surface mount and they just didn't bother to put the vent on them. But, you know, I'm going to give a benefit of the doubt. These are solid caps, which is nice. So um, let's take a look at what's on the bottom here. The way I suspect this will work um, is most most audio amplifiers work in kind of the same, same they have the, sort of the same principle. There's a, uh, you, you basically, you start by doing voltage amplification. So you do basically a gain stage and then, which has a high impedance input, and then you usually have like some, some a high impedance output basically. And then you follow that with a current amplifica amplification, which is, you know, where the power gets injected basically. And that way you can get a, a much higher quality amplification than if you were to do it in one stage with one chip. So you can have uh, something that's you know very accurate doing gain and then something that's very powerful doing uh, current. And uh, you get a higher gain and you get generally lower, uh, lower noise, lower distortion. So the fact that I see two chips here um, makes me think that maybe they're doing um, they're doing this a similar thing here. You notice that there's a lot of test points on here um, for their bed of nails test system. We've got several ground here. We've got three, three v, five v three. Sorry. So that that would be uh, five point three volts VRR VRL. So those might be the left and right uh, audio um, outs, maybe DC debt. I'm not quite sure what that is. VDD V bad V bus. So this, this has got some pretty decent uh, testing on it. And let's, uh, let's, let's, let's take a look at this side. So uh, just, I can't read the part numbers. Okay, so I can, uh, can kind of read them on the camera viewfinder. This one on this side uh, looks to be a TI OPA 1642A, uh, which if my memory serves me correctly, is a high precision, um, JFET op amp, and uh, this one on the other side here, uh, that's an analog device is uh, AD uh, eight three nine seven, which is uh, another op amp, and uh, I've 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 seen that part number before, so I uh, I suspect that uh, these are both op amps, and I suspect that one of them is doing the the current amplification, and one of these is doing the the voltage. I believe because this is a JFET input, I think this one's the voltage amplification, and this one would be the current amplification, so they are doing a two-stage um, system here. And then the rest of it here would be power supply related because of course, um, these, these op amps, um, of course they'd be rail to rail op amps to get the most out of the, the batteries in here. But the spec sheet for this thing says that uh, it has a maximum output voltage swing of 8.6 volts and um, of course, the cell is only going to be, you know, 4.2 volts at maximum. So what they'd be doing is they'd be, uh, and of course, there's only one cell, right? Because you need a positive and negative voltage for an op amp. So um, there's no two cells. And you know, if you had two cells, you could uh, put them in series, and then you could take the the the, the common in the center as your your ground reference, and then you could have a plus and minus supply that way. But uh, the fact that there's only one cell tells me that, you know, clearly there's a switch mode power supply here. You can see the inductors. So they're obviously generating a, a plus and minus supply. And my guess, just given the fact that that says 5V3, is that they may be doing a plus and minus 5 volt supply for these op amps. Uh, actually, you know what? Why don't I just test that? Um, so I can just turn it on. We can see the LED there. It's just board mount, so that's why the light pipe exists. So let me just get out a meter. And uh, we can see. I should stop just assuming things and actually measure them, right? That's what engineering is about, right? Measuring. So let's see, without shorting this out, doing this through the camera viewfinder is not easy. And yeah, it's exactly 10 volts. Wow. So yeah, plus and minus 5 volts, uh, dead on. So. So actually, that gives me an idea. Um, I actually might be modding this, so uh, maybe you'll see a video after this where I replace one of these op amps. Um, but anyway, that's for another video. So of course, we've got our power supply up here, and let's see if I can read these chips here. So I can't quite read that chip on my viewfinder, but I'll, I'll inset what it is uh, later on. And this chip here does not appear to have any markings. It just looks like it's got some 
like a pencil marking on it. So my guess is that this is probably one of those uh, ubiquitous 8-pin unbranded Chinese microcontrollers. Um, the reason why I think it's a micro is because this LED, um, this LED when you charge the thing, it does a, like a PWM uh, sequence. So there's got to be some sort of logic behind that. And also this thing has, uh, like, like it does pulse sequences and stuff if it sees uh, DC offset at the output and stuff. So it does have some, some sort of internal protection. So there is some sort of system control being done. And so there's not enough discrete stuff here for that. So there's got to be a micro and it just makes sense that would be it. So let's see. I don't know if there's anything on the other side of this. Can I pry this off? Uh, I always get I always get wary of prying these cells because if the glue is really strong and the cell bends, it just uh, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Okay, that was a lot easier than I expected. Okay, so there's just a little bit of uh, double-sided tape on there. It still managed to crease the cell though. Um, 1400 milliamp hours, that's exactly what they say on the spec sheets, they're not lying, it's got a protection board right on the cell. So they, they say don't open the thing in the manual like several times, but uh, of course really you can replace this. You could actually replace this pretty easily, I mean it's a decent sized cavity. You know what you could probably do, if you couldn't find a cell like this, like just a generic cell uh, that has protection in it, you'd need a cell that has protection because I doubt there's protection on this uh, board. Um, what you could do is you could just uh, get like a, one of those uh, like older cell phone battery packs, right? Uh, from like, you know, like the old Nokia phones and stuff. Um, you know, you can still buy those. And if it fits in this cavity, um, you can just wire it directly in those, all the cell phone batteries, they have built-in built in protection. Um, you could easily stick a battery in here if this one ever, ever died and you couldn't get this size again. But there's nothing on the back side, which makes sense. They have double-sided loaded the, the board, of course, because all the rest of the stuff's on here. But uh, no, no other chips, which is nice. We've got a date in the middle of 2015, so that would be the design date. And the 3416 would probably be the uh, the production run of the board um, when the board was manufactured. So this is early 2017, so it's been it's been around a while. And uh, I don't know who makes the pot. I'd really like to know that because, of course, um, I really love having potentiometers on um, just just any kind of audio gear because pots are, are, I mean, this is one of the big things I really don't like about, particularly about Android is, um, you know, most phones and stuff, they use MDACs, like multiplication DACs to do volume control. And the problem with those is you get a very limited number of amplification steps, right? So there's one volume that's too, too quiet and one volume that's too loud and you can't get anything in between unless you get, you know, software preamps and stuff installed. Whereas with a vault with you know a, a real pot like this, you can dial it into. I mean, it's effectively infinitely variable. You know, you're pretty much limited by you know how 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 little you can turn the knob. So you'll always be able to get the uh, the amplification that you want. And this is why I like big you know even big amps um, like my 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 amps that run my speakers and stuff in my house. They're all like from the 90s and they've got motors that turn pots when you use the remote control rather than a digital pot or anything like that. But the only downside of a pot really uh, is that uh, they, they will eventually wear out or they'll get dirt in them and they'll be all scratchy and nasty and stuff. And you know, some companies like Borns and stuff, they have really, uh, really good reputation for making nice pots and I'd love to know who made this one, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to figure that out unless I take it out. They've got a little like daughter board for some of the connections and then it, they solder that down so the daughter board goes through and then they solder it on this side which is uh, an interesting way of doing it but it's how they got the height profile. They had to mount the pot sideways. So that, I'm surprised they couldn't get a pot that uh, had all the leads that came out on uh, one side but maybe they just really wanted this particular one or this particular one was cheaper. The switches are also very strange it's one of the first things that I noticed when I got it. They, they, they I mean, it's not a, it's not a switch uh, like you're kind of maybe more used to where you have a slide. It actually tips from one side to the other, and uh, it's got a little, it's got a very interesting little plastic nib on it, and I'm, I believe that's part of the actual switch assembly itself. I don't think they've actually put like a plastic end onto it. I think that's actually how the switch comes. So 
they've managed to find a switch that has, uh, you know, uh, a nib on it that is the right size and right shape and right color that it actually goes with the sort of aesthetics of this, which is actually really nice that they they were able to source those. And uh, there is a logo you can read on this, but I I have no idea who that is. I always forget to bring this close to the camera. It's just it's it's difficult for me to see it when it gets close to the camera. Um, I, I do need to fix my recording setup. I bought a boom for my camera and it doesn't fit, so yeah, I, I fucked that one up, but anyway. I don't think there is very much else to see about this, honestly. Um, there's really no brands on anything, I mean, other than the the you know the obvious brands on the, the op amps, uh, and really I, I'd have to look up the specs of these. But yeah, I, I may make a video where I'll, uh, I'll uh, I may change one of these uh, to experiment around because I do have a favorite op amp and uh, these are not that so we'll, uh, I'll see how that works out. One other thing I, I just noticed here is they've actually got these little they're like little gold gold contacts uh, on the uh, on the board and there's two of them over here and I think these are actually designed to make uh, contact, electrical contact with the metal case and uh, in fact, you can actually see where this is supposed to go in. There's actually two little dots where there's no anodization on the aluminum. And so this is how they get uh, like a ground shield. This acts like a ground shield. I'd bet that these are tied to ground. And again, I should probably test that so people don't call me out. I bet they're ground and using the lovely test points. Yes, they are. So yeah, they're, they're, they're just shielding the thing with the actual case, which is very nice. I like the way that they've done that. They haven't done any soldering or anything, crimping or any weird stuff like that. It, I mean, this must be really, really kind of nice to assemble. I mean, it was very easy to disassemble. Um, so that's, that's always nice. See, so, yeah, I need to stop waffling. This is, uh, does not deserve a 20 minute video. Crap. Okay. So yeah, it, it looks very nice. It sounds very nice, and it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect. So anyway, thanks for watching.